Welcome to episode 289 of the Whatnots Review Show, a show where we pick a story and we talk about it. It could be a movie, a TV show, an anime, a comic book, an audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, or listen to it, and then we come back here and talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined, as always, by Kyle Springer. Bustin' makes me feel good, Melissa. I just went to go see Ghostbusters this weekend. I'm assuming you also saw it. No, I <gasps> I had two indie movies to see. Melissa. The indie movies aren't in theaters as long. <laughs> I have to catch them when I can. I'm going to see Ghostbusters in the next week, I think. Okay. You enjoy okay. the Ghostbusters? I, I had fun. It's not my favorite entry, but I think it's solid, if that makes sense. Yeah. I so, like the yeah. Ghostbusters. They feel like my uncles. I'd like to visit my <laughs> uncles at the cinema. Sure. Yeah. In, in, I'll in, go. Indeed. Instead, I went to see Problemista. Interesting. I don't know if I've heard of that one. I will not take the time on this certainly full episode to sure. describe it to you. Go look up the trailer. I'll just say it's very funny and very okay. sweet and empathetic. Great Tilda Swinton performance. Interesting. Interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed, Melissa. Uh, Well, what are we here to talk about this week? We are talking about the 2019 Jordan Peele film, Us. This is a movie I really like. I'd been wanting to bring on the show for a while. I never found room for it in our Halloween horror months. I want more horror sprinkled throughout the year, so I thought we should do it now, because this week is the five-year anniversary of the release of this film. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, this is an interesting one for me, because I, I'm i not a horror person. I don't go out and seek horror movies, all that stuff. Uh, I genuinely get scared by most of it, uh, so I tend to avoid it. So... When Jordan Peele started making horror movies, I was like, wait, that that one dude from the the, the Key and Peele skits, he's making horror movies. So I thought that was strange. I never saw Get Out. I still haven't, though that one has now made it on to my like list of shame of like, how come you haven't seen this? Um, (laughs) You're just working backwards. Yeah, like that movie got such critical acclaim that his next movie uh, us uh did pretty well too but it was enough from those first two movies for me to be like you know maybe i should kind of pay attention to what he's doing uh and by time he made nope i was like all right i'm in the theater day one for nope i loved it Mm -hmm. i I thought it was fantastic um so i this is, I guess, only my second movie that he's made that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did did he have something in between uh, us and Nope? Did did he do something um, in, bet- in between I, those two? I, I, there's he's worked on other projects like the Twilight Zone reboot that was on Paramount Plus. I okay. think he co-wrote yeah. and co-starred in Wendell and Wild, that stop motion film that's on Netflix. That's right. I have seen that, too. Uh, OK, yeah, yeah. I, I know he's worked on a few uh, uh, other things. I know he's been like executive producing other mm-hmm. things, too, um, and, st- and stuff like that. But I'm I'm not super as knowledgeable of his filmography as I think some other people might be. Um, and considering I, j- I just watched this one for the first time this <laughs> this this week, uh yeah, I think I'm slowly I'm slowly correcting that, slowly stepping in the right <laughs> di- direction there. Oh, so. I, that's OK. You know, there's a lot to keep up with in any medium or genre. And with you not being a horror person, it's fine that you are seeing <laughs> this movie now. OK, I didn't see Get Out when it first came out. I caught up to that one later. I did see us in theaters because I okay. really like the premise from the trailer. And I went with a friend who had already seen it Mm. and sitting there next to him in the theater. And he's reacting very strongly to very seemingly mundane things. I'm like, I know there was some sort of a twist coming. I can tell from these reactions there's a twist, but I can't piece it together yet. 
That was a very fun theater going experience. That's cool. That's good. So yeah. Uh, I, I have to say at the end of the day, I liked this a lot. I, I thought it was a pretty good film. Um, I, it's, it's interesting because part of my brain wants to be like, well, it's not super cohesive. It doesn't really hold up if, if you scrutinize it, all of the, that stuff. But then part of me is also like, I, I kind of think that's the point. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's not really supposed to hold up underneath all of this, this scrutiny. It's almost dreamlike in that sense. And dreams don't really make sense most of the time, yeah. right? Like it, it feels like there's a number of like horror a number of horror imagery or themes in this that's just kind of thrown in the air and it makes this interesting mix of well i'm not quite sure what they're talking about but this whole scene was scary and this whole thing is kind of wild but how does that actually work Mm -hmm. you know what it doesn't matter it's scary yeah who cares right um exactly i think it is scary that's one of the reasons i really wanted to talk about it is that i watch a lot of horror films but i don't get scared which i say not as a boast just as an observation (laughs) i don't know why things don't i never scared (laughs) but not to spoil it just to talk about it in very general terms there is something deeply unnerving to me about the final shot in this movie that is stuck with me for these five years yeah um yeah, it, it it is I I think scary in its premise. Um I, I did kind of find myself I watched this with my partner, uh, and she didn't know she didn't remember anything about like what the trailer was or what the buzz was a about from when this maybe first came out, which by the way, I was like Oh, yeah, I, I think this came out in like 2014. Nope, 2019. No. I, I was like, no way. That was so much more recent. Holy moly. Um, but I I kind of knew a little bit about the premise. Um, and so I was like, I'm not really going to say anything. So you're just going to go into this blind uh, and me like only knowing a tiny bit here. Uh, and we had a good time. I we we found ourselves laughing yeah, a lot and rather than like being scared and 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 tense. Uh, I know my p- p- partner had a whole bunch of anxiety, but in in g- in general, I think we were having a, a good time. Um, so, yeah, good experience. Lots of fun. I'm happy you enjoyed it Yeah, uh, to talk about the premise of this movie. A family goes on vacation. <laughs> to their little beach house by Santa. Correct. (laughs) They're adjacent to the Lost Boys boardwalk. And one night they look out in their driveway and there is a family just standing there. And they're like, wait a minute. They look like us. So these doppelgangers invade their home and they realize that there is an uprising of other doppelgangers that they have to kill before they are killed. And they start to look into where the doppelgangers came from. They're toppled by a gang of doppelgangers. Got to topple yeah. the doppels. My favorite board <laughs> game. I, I especially wanted to bring this on the show because dual performances are something we've particularly enjoyed in the past. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought the, the God L- Lupita in this alone, it just yeah! <laughs> absolutely chewing up the scenery, having fun. Uh, man, yeah, uh, it's it's a weird thing to say they're having fun in a horror movie, but I, I assume oh, yes. they are right. I, uh, Hor- all <laughs> movies are fun. All movies sure, yeah. should be fun. Exactly. Um, but she's like having fun dodging being murdered and having fun dancing around this creepy classroom and 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 wide-eyed and crying and and all sorts of stuff right um yeah i i i 
I think it's great performances all around, but yeah, the absolute standout is is Lu- mm. <laughs> Lupita Nyong'o. Is that how you say her, her yes her name? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, she she did fan, fantastic in this. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Get out won an Oscar for best original screenplay. And a lot of people were upset Lupita didn't get a Best Actress nomination for this. It seems like she might have been in, like, sixth place in a ballot of five for the Oscars that year. Uh, uh, among the many horror performances that should have been recognized. Sure. That, that is the legacy of this film, is a film that should have gotten uh, an actress nomination and didn't. Similar to Hereditary. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. In- interesting. Well, yeah, uh, I, I I had a great time with this. I think the premise is interesting. I think it's it's scary on its own. Um, there are some comedic moments in there, like yes. I was Im- implying. Um, but I think the cast does a great ch- job of really living in the moment of what what the premise is supposed to be and and acting appropriately. I, I think sometimes that's the zeitgeist is not the right word but like the, the the popular conception of horror movies is that people don't act like people in some of these things like no one would mm-hmm. react in that way or no one would do that thing that they did sure in, in why go this. upstairs run out of the house right. call the yeah. cops get in your car yeah yeah uh and and what what they did all seem to kind of make sense to me in 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 that way because th- there's not much to this movie in 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 terms of like the outside of the house that they're 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 mm. I- I- in there, which I'm okay with. It's I I, I think what I'm t- trying to say is that it's a smaller movie, uh, mm-hmm. and so you don't necessarily need to think about like what's happening in the rest of the world, even though there is stuff happening in the rest of the mm. world, right? You just need to focus on. This one little maybe, family. Maybe not the world. Maybe just America. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Do you have any other kind of uh comments, reactions, thoughts, feelings, uh, I, I concerns? Will, you you I, we don't have to go through all of those nouns <laughs> right now. That's so many nouns. Uh I will you said this was a small movie. I will mention. It is much bigger than Get Out is. Get Out is the movie sure. that is primarily in a single house. The home invasion part of this movie is like half an hour of the total, like two hour runtime. It's less of the movie than you think it is. Uh, they do go out into the world. It is, you can sort of see the scale evolve through these three movies. Get Out is very house based, all the sure. way up to Nope, which is these massive western vistas and big outdoor adventures yeah yeah indeed good for him good for jordan peele yeah um so yeah uh i think with that we will take a quick break for some housekeeping and when we come back we will start to discuss the film a little bit more in depth and spoil it and all that good stuff so we will be right back Thank you so much for checking out this podcast. We hope you're enjoying it. If you didn't know, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots, and a lot of hard work goes into making them, so we would love it if you checked them all out. But none of this is possible without your support. Head over to patreon.com slash the whatnots, and you can get access to over 40 hours of exclusive content, including our Patreon first podcast, The Pilots Club, when you sign up at our $3 tier. Of course, there is a free version of the Pilots Club available, but episodes are exclusive to our Patreon for two years before they hit the free feeds. If you're interested in buying merch, we have shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more for sale over at the whatnots.com slash store. Another great way to help us out is by subscribing and leaving a nice rating and review on your podcasting app of choice. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for video versions of the show, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, you can always find out more information about the shows we make on our website, thewhatnots.com. All right, we are back. Once again, a big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. 
Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. We appreciate you. We love you a lot. Uh, for the Pilots Club, uh, this past month, we got to talk about Welcome to Eltingville. Uh, had a lot of fun uh, with that one. However, for this next month, for April uh, 2024, we will be talking about uh, the, sh the new show that's on FX, that's on Hulu, Shogun. Uh, we'll be talking about the pilot of that. I've heard some great things about that show, uh, but I don't really know anything about it besides that. So uh, I, th I think we'll be in for a treat with that one. Um, and then over on the free version of the Pilots Club, the free feed, uh, this month we have our pilot of Doom Patrol out there that you guys can go check out. Um, so... Be on the lookout for all that stuff right here on the review show uh, this past uh, the the past episode. I keep wanting to say this past week, but we're, we're, we're still not on the weekly weekly schedule like we used to be. Um, two weeks ago in our previous episode, we talked about weathering with you. Uh, Makoto Shinkai's anime film, I think also from 2019. Is that? Correct. I think this one was 2019 and that one was 2019 or something like that. Um, yes. Yes, it but, was. Uh, Ignacio Rojas got to join us for that one and discuss that film. We had a blast. Go check it out uh, over on the captain's log. Uh, this past week, we got to talk about uh, some thoughts on Dune 2 under the skin, the firm. Uh, as well as Venom 3, The Last Dance. Who would have thought all that that very was very different movies? <laughs> that was the title, yeah. Um, all sorts of all, all sorts of stuff. McDonald's, OK Soda. We had a blast over on the Captain's Log. It's always a grab bag of fun over there. Uh, let's see, let's see. Not much happening on the reactor core at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think that is about it for housekeeping right now so uh i guess without further ado let's get into spoilers on us okay um yeah i i so the the only thing that i really knew about this film going into it was that there was doppelgangers mm -hmm. um and that they were in these red jumpsuits and they had these scissors and I, 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 I didn't really know anything about it besides that, um, which I, is is maybe like the least spoilery spoiler of mm -hmm. of this thing. It's yeah, that's the, the, the premise. That's, yeah, yeah, that's kind of in the in the trailer. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I still felt like. I was kind of expecting the, not that I had like, oh, I, the movie's going to go like this. Like, I didn't have expectations in that regard. Um, but I just I, I felt like I had a little bit of knowledge going in and I felt like that made it less scary because I kind of knew what to expect. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 stuff like that. I, I, I did, did not expect, however, this to be. Uh, like an entire doppelganger army rising up across America <laughs> to to take over America. Um, that that was a little bit like, huh? Okay, strange, but sure, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, does 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 the the scale of of this movie do anything for you? Like, if this had only been them, would that would that have heightened it? Would that have lowered it? Do you think, like, knowing that there's a doppelganger out there for everyone, uh, does that make it scarier? I I should mention that the in-universe term is a tether. Sure, the opposite yes. of you, your copy is called your tether. You are tethered together. Uh the scale of it is what I find so exciting and so unnerving mm, to okay. skip ahead to the ending. And you see this beforehand when the tethers are forming their hands across America and they're just standing in a line across the beach. And there's like a little inlet, a little cove, and they go across 
They go from like the shore through the water back up onto the shore on the other side. And there's people standing in like leg deep water, Mm -hmm. just stock still holding hands, not doing anything. And that final helicopter shot going over the mountains when they play the Le Fleur song, which itself is so unnerving. It's this beautiful light tinkly little song about flowers and then the orchestra comes in and it becomes so large in a way that is almost <laughs> aggressive sure yeah just the sure the bombast of that song and how it goes from so small to so big suddenly i think is really excellently contextualized in a horror movie that's a really nice choice um when you see the tethers standing in a line across these huge mountains, that is what unnerves me because you don't know how they got there. Like, of course they walked, of course, red who's the name of the main tether. Uh, of course she organized all of this, but you're like, how exactly did she send out a, a newsletter? How did all of this come together? <laughs> Subscribe and they're standing to my there. Letter. <laughs> I <laughs> How did she like reach out to all of these tethers? How interconnected are they? If you just kept walking through all those hallways, are they yeah. all connected to each other? Did she walk from California to like Maine spreading this right. message? Or the, like how, how big va- are the tunnels exactly under yeah, how is the, yeah. how massive is this like underworld setting? Um, and you know what the hands across America thing means to her. You know it as a symbol, but like literally, what are you doing? What happens next? The non sequitur nature of that final image, where you don't know what happened before and you don't know what's going to happen next. And they're just standing there like stock still. The fact that these tethers are so capable and so violent and so terrifying, but also completely content to just stand there. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is kind of unnerving. You don't know what's going to happen is so the, scary. It is just kind of unnerving that they just stand there holding hands. And it's not this like, Okay, well, once once you kill your doppelganger, your your tether, uh, like go be them, go live their life for a while, yeah. right? Like go like, go do their 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 job and work at the company that they work at, take care of their children or something. It's not that. It's just okay. Once you've killed them, get in line, take a hand. Yeah. What and what? then what? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever left a movie with such a strong question of and then what (laughs) that's that's the the scary part just the massive holes in this movie i if if they actually get all the way across america do they like evaporate and die like we did (laughs) we we've reached our purpose we we can ascend now purpose fulfilled uh or 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 yeah is is that when they go back to like living every like their own life and and stuff like that who 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 knows that's yeah it's it's right like now that we don't have to eat rabbits anymore we can go have uh above land food yeah the people who were tethers to the people who work in mcdonald's go work your job at mcdonald's and then the other people can eat the mcdonald's that you make yeah the the Weird thing, like I, I mentioned earlier that I think any kind of scrutiny for this film doesn't really hold up. And, and, and again, I, I think you're not really supposed to believe that it, it's supposed to hold up under scrutiny. Like it's supposed to kind of fall apart, uh, but it's p- supposed to be this weird dreamlike thing. You're not sure exactly mm. how it all it all works. Uh yeah, so we we have this like underground. I wouldn't even really call it a bunker because it's it's just kind of like you go into a hallway, you turn left, you go down the stairs, and you're there, right? <laughs> uh, I have to talk about this. I timed it from when uh, Adelaide opens up that door in the back of the Hall of Mirrors 
and is in this like at first what seems like it could be a believable you know backroom staff area for a theme park attraction even though right. this is a very yeah. small hall of mirrors it's not like a whole haunted mansion or anything uh she is walking through those hallways for like three or four solid minutes until she finally meets red and the transformation of all right go down these stairs go past some lockers go through some hallways like it all looks believable for a long time what's unbelievable about it is just how much there is how long it keeps going how there is clear evidence that people have used these spaces there's like yeah. one of the mill safety signs up there and no smoking and it, the lockers are here there must be people to put things in the lockers yeah it's not but like they're just... all like covered in blankets and d- dusty and like oh exactly. no, no one's been back here for 200 but you're years. also not sure this is designed for people to use them but is anybody actually using them you're right in that everything looks clean it doesn't look unattended to it's not creepy and cobwebby it's just so industrial and plain Mm -hmm. and then she descends that escalator which is surrounded by these like reflective like golden walls almost that looks like something out of a high-end department store that escalator that escalator looks like it's there to impress somebody who like i'm so mystified by the liminal space of the escalator which does not seem tied to the utilitarian nature of either the downstairs area where the tethers live or all of the theme park backstage area. Yeah. Why that? But, but like for, for when, when, when you scrutinize their underground compound, the the movie doesn't really tell you that there's a massive network underneath all of America and it spans the entire country. It never tells you that. It doesn't even really hint at that, except for the final shot when you just see the pure number of people mm-hmm. that there are. Um, you're you're, you're well, almost there is... led to believe that it's just kind of underneath the 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 theme park, the the boardwalk theme park there. Um, there is that title card at the beginning of the movie that just says there are thousands of unused tunnels beneath America. Some are abandoned subway stations or mining tunnels. Some of them, we know why they were abandoned and what they were once used for. Others, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Um, But but then, yeah, they they say like, oh, we could only eat rabbit. Okay, is is there is there a reason for, for that? Right. Uh, it, did, did you not have any uh, other food? Well, you had to have food because they eat g- 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 grass, so you had to have dirt. They need carrots right. or something what are the, like that. What so do the rabbits did, eat? Right. Yeah. Like, did, did you not have carrots? Did 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 you not have like? Can you uh, what? What's going on here? Uh, I, uh, 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 hydroponics. You, you guys can g- grow stuff under. Like, like, it looks like you're in some school kind of thing I, here. Right, you mentioned that. these This downstairs area looks like a school. It is. It has this sort of clean tile work like it's a bathroom, like the entire place is a bathroom. But it's these hallways with these little rooms, and the rooms have, like, desks and a chalkboard. It yeah. looks like a school, but there is no schooling going on. Yeah. And you don't know if was this particular area resurrected from something that was once an underground school, maybe for like, I don't know if this was some secret underground nuclear bunker and this is where the scientists kids went to school. Does everything look like this? You don't know. And every time I say you don't know something or it's mystifying or it's confusing, I it's not a detraction. I almost mean it as a sure, compliment. Yeah. I love to be confused by a movie. Please show me something I've never seen before and I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, there's there's all sorts of stuff you can look at for just like, why, what, who, how is this happening? What's go- go- going on here? My favorite type of horror is miscellaneous. And I think this falls under there because this is not 
a supernatural or paranormal story. It isn't clearly science fiction either. There is part of it that is a recognizable home invasion horror movie. But that is much, like I mentioned, it's a smaller part of the movie than you think it is. Other movies that have like a doppelganger aspect fall more under like a, a psychological. Like existential, so, yeah. Right. Or something like a perfect blue or a black swan where a character's like yes. losing their going through a breakdown. They think they're seeing things. And if it is like, oh, there's a literal copy of me, then it's like it's an alien shapeshifter. It's a government experiment. Like you can tell what it is. There's no answers here. I like yeah. that. That makes it eerier. That makes it stick with me more. The more questions I have to ask about a movie, the more it sticks in my brain, the more of a long lasting connection I have with it. Yeah. And the more I become fond of it. Yeah. Cause on, on, on the flip side of that, you can start to be like, well, so, so they have cloning technology. Where do they hide that stuff? But then they don't have food. What's go, 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 like, did the right, government and you don't start know. this? What happened? I She mentions that once, lo, vaguely long ago, the government start. I think she says the government, started this as a way to control people. These tethers are almost yeah. supposed to be like voodoo dolls or something. Yeah. We make you do something that makes your tether up there in the real world do something. Then she says, like, the experiment failed and it was abandoned. But nothing was disposed of. They were seemingly just left down there. Just didn't and come into work on Monday. <laughs> I, I, and everything just kept going unattended to. They just like grew wild down there. And I guess because everything is a tether, like, uh, you know, Adelaide meets Gabe, and then they have their two children. And because everything is an exact copy, Red must mate with Abraham and they have their two children that also look exactly the same. Yeah. Um, but then if it, it, like if their underground world is also just a series of tunnels or connected tunnels, uh, maybe not not even connected tunnels. How if, if they're not connected, how do they get to that other set of tunnels? Do they have to go up and out and, into the real world well, and down into that set over here? And like. The little she finds her way up there. She emerges through the back of the hall of mirrors. There was nothing stopping her from getting up there. Why are why are there no barriers? Why has nobody else done this? Yeah, like so. Is it only is it all, is it only because the original Adelaide wandered off that then her tether is able to also wander off in a similar fashion, and then they can meet each other. Yeah, it's it's inter it's interesting, but the, like all of that is to say that there's a lot about this that once you start looking at it, once you start qu questioning it, th there's not really answers. There's not really like, oh, well, this explains it, and you know, you know mm. she said this one thing, and that fits, and all of that. There's there's certain answers for smaller stuff, but that also leads to other questions. But and I like that. Yeah. I, like, I can tell it is all done intentionally. It's not like Jordan Peele just forgot to <laughs> fill in certain parts of the script. <laughs> what is there is exactly what is supposed to be there. We need the director's cut. <laughs> uh, no, like, uh, it, yeah, it 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 helps to add to this this dreamlike feeling of th th this, which is, I, I think, partly partly why people like horror movies. Mm -hmm. Right. They, they they want to feel the exciting exhilaration of being scared. Um, and, and sometimes that involves like, oh, well, this could happen in real life. But then there's also the like, this could never really happen in real life. But the, the thought is interesting. The thought mm -hmm. is is scary. Um, and so I, 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 li I like that. I like this kind of dream like feeling. Yes. Uh, and then we get this like uh, dream like so not song and dance, but this dream like dance happening at the end for their like final confrontation um, mm -hmm. be be between them. I, so you keep saying dream like I do want to note that 
my own personal dreams, one of the major motifs is a house that just keeps going. <laughs> just like unlimited, unforeseen space. Yeah. I mean, they, and when she's they going did. through all the hallways, that does personally resonate with me. I'm like, yes, in this case, that is literally the sort of thing I dream about. Yeah, she walks down the the like seemingly high school hallway, turns the mm -hmm. corner, and it's the exact same high school hallway. Um, right? Yeah, it just they they the film did a good job of making like those underground spaces feel like yeah this like unending liminal space um, mm -hmm. that you just you you don't know exactly what's down there or how far it I, goes or yeah yeah so. i i would i do love liminal spaces the aesthetic i am curious how and you are aware of that as a recent internet phenomenon the fascination yeah. with the liminal space i am curious how it times out to the release of this movie yeah, be in, in, inter, interesting. Just to, even to look at the the history of liminal spaces, because I know it was around mm. before, like We've its internet had popularity, them, yes. right? Yeah, um, but it, yeah, just to how how it came into pr prominence would be interesting. Uh, yeah, I uh, can get, let's let's talk a little bit about the 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 bits of the doppelgangers invading this home uh mm. and you know sitting the whole family down and 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 stuff like that uh what 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 stood out to to you about this part of the film here i it is such a powerhouse performance by everybody in the movie i think everybody's very good uh some more dramatically some more comedically I think of Tim Heidecker's doppelganger reaching out a hand and then doing the too slow, like hair slick back thing. So dumb. That's very but great. funny. Yeah. The, the kids in this movie are great. Uh, but when they just sit you down, you imagine if you were watching another home invasion movie, like if you were watching funny games or the strangers or something, there would be some sort of an, a threat or, or perhaps some sort of a bargain or a ransom or something. Right. You know, these, this movie operates on a spectrum from I'm just here to get something out of the house to because you were home. It's just a random act of violence. But with this, it's like everybody is sort of cornered onto the couch and then they handcuff Adelaide to the, to the table and Red just sits them down and lights a fire and tells them this terrifying parable, which is slightly preposterous. I think it's funny that she describes what she's been going through, and it is the sort of fairy tale nightmare, but it is literal. Like when she says her daughter, Umbre, was born laughing. That's a fact. Y yeah. You could prove that. But when she says about her youngest child, Pluto, he was born to love fire. Then it's like a statement of destiny. And I'm like, lady, you can't prove that. Right. <laughs> Just that one more grandiose statement thrown in there is very funny to me. Uh, yeah, this is not at all what you were expecting. For somebody, to looks, somebody who looks exactly like you to break into your house, not really threaten you in any way, and just tell you a fairy tale yeah with this haunting this voice is incredible it's she sounds kind of like voldemort <laughs> that's my it, closest it, it almost sounds like equivalent to it she, like at, when when i first heard her talk my thought was like okay it's a it's a doppelganger it's a it's a mirror self it's like the they they do the opposite so we breathe out when we talk is she breathing in while she talks oh, like is that like interesting. how she's doing that i i don't i don't think that line of questioning went anywhere and i don't think it holds up but that was one of my thoughts of like how how deep does this like opposite effect 
because at, at the time, like, I had no idea what to expect, right? I, I'm just sitting there like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. Cool. We walk with our hands. <laughs> yeah. We drink food and eat water. <laughs> he was born to like fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> the way that she sounds like it hurts for her to talk, she is so raspy. And you think also about how did she organize all of this? Was she speaking then? Was she giving speeches to these groups of tethers down there? Why does it sound like she hasn't spoken in years? Why can none of them really speak? Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I think that is maybe one of the few things about the film that maybe does hold up under scrutiny. Yes. I, I, I think is really interesting. Uh, a, another tw twist of this movie is that... Uh, Red, red, red is the original she she is not yeah. the tether uh and so maybe that's why her voice is hoarse yes, and raspy is she hasn't one, talked like, choked she her did yeah. get choked right like it doesn't seem like any of the other actual tethers can really speak they can vocalize right they can yell and hoot and ho ho holler but it doesn't really seem like they understand english I mean, they, they they understand it, but can't speak it, maybe. Yes. But it, it, it does make sense then that like, OK, here's one that can talk, but she has this kind of distorted voice, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, what so, did yeah, you I, think about the sl the slow release to the twist that there was a switcheroo, that we are not looking at a woman who had this terrifying encounter when she was a little girl and escaped? She is the thing that escaped and took over the actual little girl's life. Yeah. Um I I I'm I'm sure the thought crossed my mind earlier on when I didn't really understand kind of what was happening in the movie yet, but I think by the end of it I was less concerned with that question and more so can can someone from above turn into one of the things down below because i think as she's having this kind of violent confrontation with her tether it mm -hmm. really feels like the the i forget her actual name in the m movie what's the one from above? adelaide adelaide yeah uh the, the one we know as a a a Adelaide, she does kind of start to get into this crazed mode. And I like the thoughts going through my head was like, can, can she turn into one of them and find that setting or, or find some kind of common ground with their purpose? And she joins them. Like, is that the, like, does, does, is, is, is this a whole thing of like, now they take over their spot in the under? in the underground people like it is a rehearsal of like oh you invaded our home but we killed you and now we're taking over your spot um mm -hmm. and, and that's not what happened but i i i think there are like slight connections of like okay i i can see why she has this crazed like mindset why she wants to protect her children so much because she did escape that and she now has this much nicer life she does not need to mm -hmm. eat rabbit all the time she, right she she can yeah. have carrots too uh, <laughs> uh and like that is why she is so desperately protecting all of this, mm. the, this, the, you know, this, not there, that she wouldn't otherwise, but there is just this added layer of like, oh, OK, that makes sense. There is a scene early on in the movie where the family is just having a meal together and you see her eat a strawberry and she does seem to really savor that strawberry for a moment yeah. in a way that you don't really think about until you understand later that she grew up eating only rabbit ron wriggling yeah yeah um which th then like my my mind is even questioning then like how uh, how far has she influenced her children and her her husband to not be like the tethers down below right uh mm. 
we 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 do know that the the boy was born to like fire is she the one that emptied kyle to uh, love fire excuse me to love (laughs) fire um (laughs) i also have the question about how clearly he's been burned for something i is there like a doctor tether is there one of the tethers who has medical knowledge paging doctor tether paging doctor tether (laughs) (laughs) i do have health care who ch- it, does anyone check on you or do you entirely have to figure out how to do this right yeah yourselves? but 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 like is is did she secretly uh, like empty his like finger lighter thing here so that he wouldn't have it as much right i i, I that's just it, it's I don't, a weird I don't think question in the back that. of my yeah. mind um but I, I, yeah I mean, I mean being from that underground world initially i'm 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 just kind of thinking about how much she may have tried to influence her life above ground unsure yeah unsure unsure in indeed i need to loop back around to the this scene where they all get sat dad down. It's the home invasion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they handcuff her to this table, this coffee t- mm. t- table. This coffee table must weigh one ton. How, how come she cannot move the coffee table or break it? I, uh, she, 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 she can't breaks reach it later. The thing. She breaks it later. But like, it's a coffee table. Can she not I, like she has to like she's reaching for the fire p- poker stick, can't reach it. So she's using her foot. Can she not just like move this a, a little bit? Like, let's just lift this up and drag it over a bit to get this. And she and then she breaks it with the with the stick eventually. But like it just seemed like it was bolted to the ground. <laughs> I, and I was like, what? I, <laughs> what's happening here? I, it's important to mention that this beach house they're staying at is, I think, like the family beach house that sure, Adelaide's yeah. mother had. So Red grew up going to this house, which is why she is, you know, I, at least I don't know if you picked up on any of this when you were watching this movie for the first time of like, how does this woman know to find the hide a key in the fake rock? How does she like she walks? She does walk mm. through this house like she knows it. She goes right to the fireplace, knows how to light the fire, has Adelaide handcuff herself to the coffee table. And if she disappeared from this world when she was like seven years old, I can't imagine a little seven year old thinking that coffee table is impenetrable. I'll ever handcuff herself to that. She'll never get out. And but maybe it works. Or Adelaide. It works. I, she can't move it. I it's mean, kryptonite it, <laughs> to, to her. <laughs> maybe she breaks it with, when the opportunity is right. I I was not thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just we're one of those things like if she had tried to like run off in a certain d- d- direction, she would have been like y- y- yanked back because <laughs> her arm would have been stuck. And I'm just like, it's. It's a, like a 50 pound coffee table. Like what, what is happening here? Um, but, but yeah, that's just, that, that's just a little small discrepancy that I noticed <laughs> that I thought was funny. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like all of that stuff. Um, I, I like even the, the kind of, uh, not creepy ways, but even the, the parallels that they 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 don't necessarily really know uh, would mm. be a parallel. The fact that the boy has a mask on for yeah. both instances. One is this like a- a- almost like balaclava looking mask to cover up his burns on his mm. face. Well, the other one is the Chewbacca mask uh, yeah. made famous yeah. by uh, Chewbacca mom. Um, <laughs> right? it's, it's this like plastic. Plastic, yeah. Probably, he, he probably picked it up from the house last time he was there. This feels like an 80s relic. This is what you would get at the drugstore. Legally distinct giant furry space friend Halloween mask. Came with yeah. a matching plastic smock. One of those. 
I saw a little boy like this once. I went for a walk in the park and next to me is a mom and a little boy who's wearing like a dinosaur mask. And I turn and I look at him and it's like some new mask, like the Chewbacca mom mask. Yeah. He just like opens his mouth at me and the mask makes like a roar noise. <laughs> Great. Love it. <laughs> but, but doesn't yeah, say like anything, there's... just opens his mouth, just ah. <laughs> and then the mask speaks for him and it speaks roar there's there's some some interesting <laughs> stuff with with that uh but then something else that i really enjoyed uh we haven't really talked about elizabeth moss's character and yeah. like i mean you may mentioned the like here's the hand oh too slow right <laughs> hand, hand thing, which was just ridiculous um but it, some sometimes like even like this is also what I enjoy about the film is that it makes you think like, OK, okay so the, the Tim Heidecker's character in this is kind of just this swagless, like pathetic, I like d guy. I don't really know how to describe him. But so then when he, we he's, do get the doppelganger, cool, he's a cool Gen X guy or a Gen X guy who thinks he is cool thinks he is cool but <laughs> yes. he's not but then the doppelganger just kind of has so much more swagger to like the way he <laughs> moves like e even if it is also kind of like okay this is stupid this is ridiculous he did the like high five too slow <laughs> kind of thing like he has he has this swagger to like the way he moves and sits uh but then like elizabeth moss's character uh her her above ground version uh it, it, it she's she, she's not the like stuck housewife kind of thing but the like rolls her eyes at her husband like jokes yes. about like oh he's useless i can't wait till i divorce him like when is it vodka o'clock um yes but then also like what i thought was interesting was the scene where her tether is sitting at the vanity table putting on the makeup and trying mm -hmm. to act like a normal person um, mm -hmm. and, and she can't speak so she's like opening her mouth as if she is laughing but no sound comes out yeah and that was the first time that I kind of really not noticed that they couldn't talk but uh, th like it was more than 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 just like the 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 other family and like okay there there seems to be some kind like he's only yelling and gr grunting um which I, I liked the the like proud dad moments as the tether on the boat is like, and then his daughter like yells, his daughter yells back and he, you know, he's just like, hey, are you all right? You doing good? Yeah. All right. Good. Keep it up. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, like it just. It really made my mind wander seeing Elizabeth Elizabeth Moss's character do this like I want to be like what you guys do yeah. up, up, up up here. And then I was like, well, is that is that the goal for all of them? Is that like one of the central I, themes of this movie? Like, do the, is this about yeah. like like classism and like the class divide and here's mm. a here's a people that were were kind of th their, their their situation was out of their control it was engineered by the government they're kind of ignored and treated poorly that can fit for a lot of minorities mm. across mm. america I, right like <laughs> but another interesting detail is that everyone has a tether it's yes. not like it's not only certain groups or classes of people. It's 100 percent all Americans. If you're like from another country and you move to America, I don't know if they suddenly generate a tether for you or if you just don't have one. I don't know how this works. Who who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, my mind just started racing with 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 that. Because I, I that's yeah. that's also the like gift and curse of both being in an art student and a podcaster who's like making <laughs> content about 
movies and television yes. shows. It's just like, how do I analyze this? What is the mm. meaning behind this? What are the themes? What are the what, what what's the moral of the story here? Uh, and to kind of con, con, continue what we've been saying is like it feels like there's multiple themes. There's multiple things that this movie was trying to get at or comment on. And it's not necessarily a cohesive one thing. It's not, oh, this is a movie about classism. Mm -hmm. It's not just that. Yeah, I, I think that is what drew me to this movie is that it's it does have themes like that, but they're more abstract. Mm -hmm. And it is first and foremost a, a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it is saying a lot of things, but secondary to the horror. Not that a, a movie that is primarily a form of social commentary. That's very valuable. That is necessary. It's just not always what I, I, I feel like watching. Uh, I love a good old fashioned horror story. Yeah. And it, it does have interesting things to say uh, sociologically and also interesting things to add to the genre. I was just thinking about how that other family has twins and mm -hmm. frequently twins are a source of horror. Yeah. You think of the two little girls in the shining who I don't think are literally twins. They're just close enough to the same age and height and they're wearing the exact same clothes. So they get labeled as twins. Like yeah. twins are a scary thing. There aren't movies where scary things happen to twins. Twins are never the protagonists. Your heroes are never twins. But like, twins are for horror. It's it's also an interesting it, in a movie about doppelgangers. It is an interesting mirror to be like, well, yes. twins are also kind of that same concept. They look alike. They often act alike or have that like freaky twin thing that we knew about mm. from all those Disney movies and st stuff like that. Um where, where, yeah, where they say the same thing or they do the same thing. And that's what's happening with the tethers, right? They they look alike. They do the same things underground. They marry the same people, right? They have the mm -hmm. same kids, um, which uh, uh, also is a bit mystery, mathematically speaking. Um, <laughs> just how how does that happen? <laughs> How does the exact sperm get there? right? Yeah, exactly. Out of millions of exactly. Sperm. <laughs> um, yeah, it. Yeah. So I like I, I like that kind of reflection in just in the above ground world. Like here's also that freaky twin thing happening above mm -hmm. ground. So there's lots of motifs of duplication and mirroring in this movie. <laughs> You see the number eleven eleven pop up both on the clock and yep. um, the uh, that man on the boardwalk holding up the sign for Jeremiah eleven 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 being a duplication a mirror, but it goes down to things like one of those twin girls is wearing a black flag T shirt and that band's logo is these four bars that look like eleven eleven right yeah Interesting. even down to. The song that the family's singing in the car is I've Got Five on it, which is about two people coming together, each putting five dollars towards a dime bag, which is about you and I give the same thing. We are the same. We form a unit together. Yeah, I, I, I also liked the comment where they, they were like, it's about drugs. It's about weed. He goes, it's not about weed. It's a dope song. <laughs> 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 it's it, I'm going to de deny the fact that it is about drugs, but it is dope as the adjective. And as I'm not going to cool, think about yeah. how dope the adjective is also a term for drugs. It's great. Yeah. The, the like double meaning of the, of, of that. Right? Exactly. The, yes. The idea that they are g -g -g going to a vacation home, which is a second home, this like second yeah. lo location. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's all sorts of stuff like that one eerie detail is when they're having that picnic on the beach and some other beach goer throws a frisbee and it lands on their blanket which exact is a polka dot spot, blanket. yeah yes and the frisbee exactly covers one of those big polka dots it is exactly the same color which is part of that 
theme of duplication of mirroring and of one thing taking over another thing. Mm -hmm. But also is the sort of weird coincidence that feels like it was... It it was going to lead to that thing in Nope where the shoe is just standing perfectly vertically. Sure, yeah, yeah. I could see things in this that would, like motifs that would repeat again in Nope, like the weird coincidental physical placement of something out of the thousand different ways this physical object could land somewhere. Why does it land like that? Having somebody wearing a mask and then they pull up their... A, yes, face that has been like burned or something like mm -hmm. that uh the kitty uh elizabeth moss's character is talking about how oh i could have been a, an actress i could have been a movie star but these twins were just born at the wrong time it's similar to uh jupiter park talking about how he could have been a much bigger star and he's trying to like cling to this stardom now mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely um yeah I, I don't know if I have too much else to say on on this. Um, I, I I liked how uh, Winston Duke's character also kind of mm. has this uh, like petty rivalry with uh, <laughs> Tim Heidecker's <laughs> character. Uh, they're trying to one up each other, but also trying to impress their family, who is just unimpressed. Like, yeah, the, the, like we don't care about this boat, dad. <laughs> I, right, I love that his boat is called Craw Daddy. And then Tim Heidecker's boat is Biatch. Biatch. Yeah, I saw that, which was <laughs> which great. Which is, is so true. I, I took a walk around Navy Pier in Chicago once. Every boat has a name like that. <laughs> yeah, so great. Um. But yeah, I I had a great time with this. I was a lot less scared I'm than I was ex did. expecting, I think, because of Good. those comedic I moments. But also, I think because of seeing Nope uh, like uh, before this and just kind of knowing what kind of like, OK, Jordan Peele has kind of found his footing in in all mm. of this by by no, no. He obviously knows what he's doing doing he's a well-trusted name in in all of this that's why they even market stuff that he's just like the from executive yes. producer jordan peele it's monkey man right and it's like okay mm -hmm. like more what masks does that mean did he just like check off the story and said put money behind that one um <laughs> or who, who knows um, I, uh, executive producers can have all kinds of levels of involvement ex <laughs> I don't exactly. know exactly but he's he's a name that you now tout as like oh he is involved yeah. with the project he, um, he makes really I, really well crafted stuff has I think a, like a lot to say like sociologically or just like about the genre that it is in his horror has a specific voice to it. The situations are all very specific. Yeah. Like these aren't the sort of horror movies that I think. Uh, they're such outlandish situations that it doesn't eat at you like a thing that you worry could happen to you. Like you could be scared that the strangers could happen to you. The horror movie, the strangers about that uh, home invasion. You could be scared about that sort of home invasion or a serial killer or even an, an alien or something. But the way he presents things, you don't think, oh, no, what if that happened to me? Right. So for somebody who is less uh, experienced or less, they don't access horror very much or very well, these movies feel easy to pick up and grab. Uh, the th threats aren't as tangible and realistic and present in your life there's humor to help you ride through there's a lot of just general weirdness and i think this movie is scary but not in a jumpy way not in a turn off the lights and then run upstairs sort of way but just more in like a deeply unnerving way yeah yeah there's there's bits and pieces of stuff that is like yeah this could happen to me but it's heightened in a way that makes it it's like okay this couldn't happen 
it's it's kind of unbelievable in, in in that sense but it's it's just one step removed in a way that i didn't think about or or stuff like that, that i think makes it interesting um but yeah i i enjoy enjoyed this a lot was a lot less scared than i was kind of expecting to be um so yay yay for, for, for brave me, boy who actually get scared i was a brave boy uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but but yeah I, I i had a good time with this one for sure indeed indeed uh any other kind of final thoughts that you want to add on to this no i'm good um, i'm happy you enjoyed it yeah good stuff okay i am going to bring up our bingo cards to see if we have anything from bingo uh breaks into dance do do do, do we count that one is 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 this I, the kind of breaks into dance we were thinking about i think we mostly see the dancing in flashback where it is discussed it is very clear why the dancing is happening. Uh, that after the tether comes up and is we, unaccustomed to human life and doesn't know how to speak, and her parents just think she's been traumatized by something, yeah. they're like, "Let's put her through dance therapy. She can dance out her feelings." And then the the original Adelaide, who somehow must become a tether to her tether. I don't. I'm still not. Clear on how that works if there's some condition of just the space that you're in that once you are down there and the other one is up there you must mirror their movements it right. just happens to you she also there's dancing in this movie but it isn't the suddenly we have broken out into dance of something like the movie ex machina right i i i was kind of thinking more so of their final confrontation as she's like mm. dancing around the desks in in this like dancey okay. way because like, her her it's... movements are kind of mirroring the flashbacks that are happening I, that's using dance training as part of a fight scene not okay. in like the way star lord does it at ronan the accuser <laughs> right right yeah so that maybe is, we skip that we, one that would count we could we're close dancing is in this but right. not the like and suddenly there's dancing sort of way. Uh, uh, yeah, a whole big beach flash de 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 dance happening as as <laughs> everyone starts doing th th thriller. Um, uh, I am able to cross off fast fake fast food brand. At the beginning of the movie, the family is eating uh, like Copper Pots Cove seafood or it's supposed to look like a long john silvers or a captain d's or something i think but it's called mm -hmm. copper pot after the explorer from the goonies there's a lot of 80s references in this movie yeah and it references the goonies less in a, a sort of a sort of stranger things -y way to give you the effect of like Amblin aesthetic, bunch of kids on bikes, kid adventure. It's not going for that. It's going for descending to a second world that is beneath your own world. And when you right. go down there, you find power. Like when the kids go down there and they're like, we could be the heroes. This is our time. So that like fake brand they're eating is named after that. Um... I'm trying to see. I I I don't think I have. Did did we get a like long exposition followed by why are you telling me this in the scene that they're all sat on the couch? Mm, not exactly. I I, I feel like this so. movie it's not the obvious example but it is a we're not so different you and I literally. Yeah, just with, without saying so much words do you think i can cross off that one i, I yeah I, I i i would say so like i this is similar to our breaks into d d dance where it's like it's so close but the whole theme of the movie is yes that, is the like we're yes. not so similar you and i <laughs> we're not so different 
Yeah. And finally, yeah, right. <laughs> buff nerd, does just the presence of Winston Duke and the way his character is written give me buff nerd? I don't think so. I, is he he's a nerd? Got, he's I, he's definitely he has a boat. He's he's definitely a dork. Like his none of his family takes him seriously. He keeps doing that thing where he pushes his glasses up his nose, which is funny because then his tether keeps doing that without having glasses. Yeah. <laughs> so he's making a movement at nothing. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Because I, 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 I don't know where else we're really going to have a buff nerd. Unless we, you know read some superman comics that spent a lot of time with clark kent right yeah <laughs> clark kent the ultimate even then, buff nerd even then do we want to get into the semantics of like well what is a nerd versus a dork I, versus a, <laughs> a true like, <laughs> true for me i'm like this is a man who is clearly intelligent i like him wearing his university sweatshirt uh, he's doing the yeah. classic old school nerd yeah. sign of yeah. pushing the glasses up your nose. You know what? Nobody yes. takes yeah. him. Nobody really takes him seriously. He feels like he's the lowest person on the rung in a lot of situations where, like, he's trying to do things, and his family's like, "No, Dad!" And then he can't <laughs> impress Tim Heidecker in any way. <laughs> I, I I think you're right with the like alma mater sweatshirt, the glasses. Like, I I feel like. To then, like, have a vacation ho home and be able to buy a boat. Like, this guy must kind of be a nerd, real smart or business savvy in some pencil pushing nerd kind of way. He's an wet actuary way, right? or something. Who right. Knows? Yeah. Has, has a little bit of money. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, 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 I think you've convinced me. Buff nerd. You get that one. For sure. Um, but I don't think I've got anything this with, with this one. I, I'm, I'm looking at my. My squares and I, I, I don't see I, I came close on a couple. Dang, Winston Duke never takes his shirt off. Right. If he had like the what sexy a loss like, for us moment where he takes his shirt off. But no. Um, this I this is almost villain lair, but it's not really there. Yeah. Oh, secret no. door. Secret door. Is it really secret? Uh yes, when she pops the door open in the house of mirrors, and she can tell that's the secret door because there's the rabbit on it. It's the Alice in Wonderland yes. reference. Yeah. I yeah, uh, I yeah. Where is my secret door? door one here uh secret i also love door. seeing Where the passage it? of time is oh, in here. that in the 80s that's like uh some native american shaman like spirit journey themed house of mirrors and then in contemporary times they're like let's just make it a generic non-offensive wizard yeah. <laughs> welcome to generic non-offensive wizards house of mirrors <laughs> uh cool all right cool I, yeah i i will take that then I will take that. Um, but that may be it for our bingo update uh, for this mm -hmm. this week here. Um, so let me move this back over. There we go. Melissa, recommendations yes. for people who enjoyed us, the movie Us. What else might they like? So I wanted to bring this with us here on the show for a, a great example of a dual performance. Which we've encountered several times on the show, but most notably in Suspiria. Uh, mm -hmm. On episode 181, we watched both the original and remake versions of Suspiria. Yeah. Uh, the Luca Guadagnino Suspiria remake features a shocking surprise dual performance from Tilda Swinton. That really blew your mind. Yeah, uh, so in honor absolutely. of that, I wanted to bring us this. Watch this. Watch both Suspirias, but this is more applicable to the, the remake of Suspiria. Lots of ballet-based horror. We've watched Suspiria. Yes, yeah. We've watched this. 
Black Swan. There's a little bit of that in Perfect Blue. We got to yeah. find more. We'll go see Abigail this year. About the, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the trailers for Abigail? No. It's I, f- I have not. The, these criminals are sent to uh, ab- abduct and like watch over this little girl for ransom. Like they're just a hired hands. I don't think they like planned any of it. They were just sent to this mansion. Like this girl has been kidnapped. You are here to watch her for 24 hours while we arrange for the ransom. Mm. This little girl in her ballet outfit. And then you find out she's a vampire and she's slowly going to eat all of the people with her in this mansion. Interesting. Hmm. It looks funny. <laughs> this is, of course, not a serious little ballet vampire <laughs> ransom movie. <laughs> it's for laughs. Uh, I recommend The Suspirias. I recommend yeah. The Lost Boys. This movie is filmed in the same area. They make a reference to it in the 80s scenes. Lost Boys is a lot of fun. I mentioned Hereditary earlier. If what you want to come to a horror movie for is uh, a, a f- family situation and a real outstanding barn burner of a lead actress performance, you can watch Tony Collette in Hereditary. Mm-hmm. This movie, not as specifically to its content, but more of where it falls in the director's filmography. I've seen compared to Unbreakable. We also did an episode talking about M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable and Split and Glass, that whole trilogy. Yeah. In that they are both directors who came out with these incredibly impressive calling card nomination worthy movies with Get Out and The Sixth Sense. Then their second features aren't received quite as well and also both start with these ominous, mysterious title cards where this one starts with there's millions of unused tunnels underneath America and Unbreakable starts with comic books have been a popular form of American entertainment for decades selling millions of copies every year and then you watch the sad Bruce Willis drama and you're like, what does this have to do with comic books until you get to the very end? And then both of their third movies are these big scale uh, rural set alien epics. Yeah. A nice set of triple features. uh, Unbreakable, Six Sense Unbreakable and Signs and then Get Out, Us and Nope. Yeah. And then finally, I mentioned how one of the most effective parts of this movie for me is the song that plays over the final scene. Mm -hmm. And how there's something just sort of odd about that song in its jump from being small to being big and how that really suits this final scene. And in that context makes it very eerie. The movie Zodiac, David Fincher's Mm. Zodiac also has a terrifying ending that centers on recontextualizing a song from the 70s and making it suddenly very creepy when you play it over this scene. Sure. Yeah. Some good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Indeed. We'll grab a bag of various recommendations for you. <laughs> uh, recommendations that came to mind for me, of course. Yeah. More of Jordan Peele's filmography. Uh, we also mentioned that he worked on a revival of uh, The Twilight my mind Zone. just went b- b- blank. Yes. Thank you. The Twilight z- z- Zone. Uh, go watch some of the original Twilight Zone. Uh, they yeah. have some gr- some great uh, like doppelganger episodes or even um, w- w- the one I'm even thinking of. Not so much doppelgangers, but the idea that the like mannequins in a department store come t- to life at night. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and, and stuff and stuff like that. There's some great stories uh, in there with that. Um, but then, yeah, yeah I, I would also second the recommendations for uh, for stuff like Black Swan, Perfect Blue, Suspiria. Um, th- but then I would also add on there things like Old Boy, um, oh, which is a okay. really, really fucked up movie. 
uh, is more of like a, a thriller, like a crime thriller. Um, it's more action oriented. It's not really horror until you realize everything that has happened um, in, mm-hmm. in this. And it's more of like horror out of disgust um, uh-huh. rather than like, this is a horrific situation. I'm scared. Um, but uh, it, it, it also kind of has this like there's something happening in the background here that's not quite explained uh that that uh i mean the the premise of old boy if if you don't know is that this guy is imprisoned for 15 year, years of his life has no idea why he's just stuck inside this hotel room with no contact with the outside world he might get some news uh stuff on his tv i forget but he's just kind of left in the in the, the, the air and fed and when he gets out this whole like operation to like put put him it like imprison him in the there it is not it, like that's not necessarily the focal point of the movie it's not really explored and so it, it's just this like what is this operation that is happening here uh, what is this thing that's happening behind the scenes? Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd put something like that uh, in there. Um, if you're into comics, there's all kinds of uh, like hmm. body switching stuff, even Marvel's Secret Invasion. Um, if you go read the original comics for that, because um, it plays with this idea of the characters, you know, and love have been replaced by these a- a- aliens that look like them that have been acting like them in some cases for years uh yeah how do you fix that right um so some good stuff out there for everyone to check out um but yeah i think that's about it for recommendations mm-hmm. uh for our next episode for our next two episodes actually mm. uh melissa and i have decided to do what we call april april i was about to say april april <laughs> it's, apple it's april. apple uh we are going to be spending this month on programming from apple tv plus yeah. we've enjoyed stuff from that platform in the past and also making it a whole theme month is just easy for turning our various subscriptions on and off yes <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Uh, so first up uh, for Apple April is Hello Tomorrow. Uh, this was a show that came out uh, in early 2023 starring Billy Crudup. Um, Melissa, you you were the one that that uh, kind of mentioned this. I, I don't think I had heard of it until you kind of pitched no. it to me off the show. Do you want to give a little bit of a synopsis or are you are you prepared to to do that or would you like me to i the, billy crudup sells timeshares on the moon in this retro futuristic world that looks like the 1950s and also the future that the 1950s imagined there's Imagine robots the there's gadgets right robots gadgets gizmos and also exhausted traveling salesmen yeah um, but uh, from from the, the the trailer that we watched, it seems like uh, this might be a scenario where things are kind of falling apart as uh, his his time. Sh- like he his he's he's basically a con man. They haven't like colonized the moon yet or maybe they, they have. But he like he's his, his a actual time. Sh- yeah, sh- his actual time sh- shares aren't necessarily real and so i think he's trying to keep everything together as he has to uh kind of defend his his no they are real we just delayed the launch by a a month and because this Mm. one thing who knows what so uh could be interesting i liked the the trailer uh the look of this show looks really really cool um I, i i like that whole retro futurism 50s but to the moon mm. look so uh yeah that is what we will be doing in two weeks time like we said this is on apple tv plus um it is a total of 10 episodes there is one season out um i from what i understood it hasn't 
technically been canceled, but it hasn't technically been renewed either. So that's all I know. There you go. That's what we will be up to in two weeks time. Um, and then I guess just to give a quick hint of what we'll be doing after that slow horses. So mm. be on the lookout for that stuff too. Um, cool. I think that's about it for this here podcast. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the interwebs? I don't really post anywhere. This podcast is the one thing I do on the internet. You can find me places at WilkyWit, W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. I have accounts. You could send me a message. There you go. Yeah. Um, cool. If you guys want to uh, follow me, I am at Yo Kyle Springer. Uh, and if you'd like to stay up to date with everything that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots Official on Threads. So please go like, share, and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. If you're watching this on YouTube, go check out more of our videos on that side of the screen. That would help us out as well. Uh, yeah, this has been number 289 of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.